In this video, we are going to take a look at PHP Storm in combination with Docker. And we are going to set this IDE up in a way that we can run scripts from within PHP Storm on a Docker container. And there are actually um, two ways to do that. We're going to look into both of them. But before we do that, I would urge you to download my um, Docker PHP tutorial um, repository, which will give you basically this setup right here um, and is uh, ha contains um, like like a working docker setup um, so everything should go smoothly um, you can get this from github um, under uh, paslandau slash docker dash php dash tutorial and here just grab the url um, head over to your favorite shell and then git clone the uh, repository um, as I've already done that I'm going to skip the clone step um, but once you have cloned the repository please make sure that you are checking out part underscore two as branch so there are currently uh, three branches master part one and part two and we are going to need part underscore two um, for this tutorial so once we have that, we need to actually build the Docker containers. Um, and to do that, we are going to run docker-compose build. And I'm going to use the no cache flag because I've already done this on my machine. And I want to give you like more realistic idea of how long this is going to take. So we are going to run that. And um, Docker is now basically pulling down the uh, images that, that we need and is um, installing all the stuff that is required. Um, and while it is doing that, we are going to look at the Docker file to give an idea what's happening behind the scenes. So to do that, please open PHP Storm. And well, I've already done that. If you did not, um, please um, hit open and then choose the um, the repository that we have just cloned, which should give you like basically the same uh, interface that we're seeing right here. Um, and we have an application directory that contains our source code. And then we have something for Nginx and for PHP FPM. We will not need this um, in this tutorial, but we will need the setup for PHP CLI and our Docker compose file. Um, so, First of all, let's take a look at the Docker file for the PHP CLI uh, container um, because we are doing a couple of things that are important for um, the deployment configuration that we will like look at later on. Um, and the first one is that we are well. First of all, we are taking like the normal base, uh, the normal PHP base image. And then we are installing um, OpenSSH server so that we have um, an SSH daemon running and we can log in from SSH um, in or on the container. That is actually required for um, the deployment configuration um, that we are going to configure later on. So first thing is we install that server. Um, and the second thing is, in order to be able to log in, we need to provide um, a public SSH key, uh, or better, we need to provide um, an authorized keys file in the .ssh directory of the user, in that case, root, um, that we want to log in later on. And we are, or in, in order to do that, um, the the repository is set up in a way that I have pre-generated um, SSH keys, which obviously is like hugely insecure. So like do not use this like um, setup out of the box, um, but it's very convenient because everybody who's like doing this tutorial has basically everything in place. Um, that being said, again, what we do when we build the container is we copy the public file to the container and then we basically take its contents and add it to the authorized keys file so that we can later um, log in with the corresponding private key. So this is the second thing, second thing that we need to keep in mind 
And the third one is that we need to change the, the command or the entry point of the container um, in order to actually run the um, SSH daemon because otherwise we wouldn't be able to log in. So those are the, um, let's call it important modifications of the container. Um, plus we're installing xdebug, but we did that in the, in the first part of the tutorial. So I'm not gonna talk about that in detail here. But um, again, um, the stuff that we need is all the, the SSH stuff. So um, once we have that in place, then we need to take a look at the Docker compose file because there are two important things that we do in there. Um, so when we look at the Docker PHP CLI service, which use the directory that we've just seen as a context, um, then we, Number one, um, provide a port mapping. So basically we map port 22 of the newly created container to port 2222 on the host machine, um, which makes sense because um, IP addresses of containers are non-deterministic. Um, and by using this port mapping, I can later on in my IDE always refer to localhost um, and this port, and it will basically always work. So that's why we create the port mapping here. Um, and we also um, <coughs> add a volume where we basically um, make sure that the container knows the contents of our application folder under the path var dot dot dot. This is again something that we will need later on when we configure the path mappings. Okay, so but that should be it when it comes to the Docker setup or the things we need to do in the Docker containers to make that work. So let's get back and check out um, if the building is finished, looks like it. Um, so we've actually built everything. So for example, down here, you can see that we've also built the PHP FPM container. Um, didn't strictly need that, but also doesn't really matter. So building is finished. Um, and let me just show you the, uh, the, the CLI container to show you the name of the image because we will need that in a second. So we started here building the CLI image and we finished, uh, come on, uh, six, seven, and we finished down here and the, um, the image was packed with docker-php-tutorial underscore docker-php-cli colon latest. So this is the image that is now available um, for us. Okay, so now we have talked a lot about Docker and the Docker setup. Let's actually make this work with um, PHP Storm. So, to do that, we are looking firstly at the native method. Um, open up settings and look for Docker under build execution and deployment and create a new entry down here. Uh, we can leave the name Docker, that is fine. And we need to set this um, engine API URL, um, which is required for PHP Storm to be able to talk to Docker. Um, if everything is working, you should see this connection successful information down here. If that is not the case, then you probably need to activate um, a setting in your Docker setup or Docker settings. Um, that is, uh, oh, come on, um, in the Docker settings under general, um, you have this checkbox down here that reads expo uh, expose daemon on TCP localhost some port without TLS and you need to enable this option in order for PHP Storm to be able to talk to Docker. Um, if, you, if you didn't do that and check this, this box, then Docker will restart just as a side note. Okay, so let's assume you have that and this is working. You have this connection successful information down here. Then this is basically all we need to do. Now our Docker server is configured in PHP Storm. Cool. So how do we actually use that? Um, we need to go over to uh, languages and frameworks, PHP, and in here choose um, 
uh, PHP interpreter. interpreter. Uh, so let's do that. Oh, sorry. This is from <laughs> from my first dry run on this video. So I'm gonna delete that for now, so that we have like clean clean slate. So this is how it should look like for you. Um, hit the three dots over here. It should bring up this this pop up with the um, interpreters. Hit the plus. Um, choose from Docker, Vagrant, uh, VM, etc. Then we are going to choose Docker from the radio buttons up here. Um, and then we should be able to just use the newly created Docker server. If, you, if this does not show up for you, then hit new and then you should be able to create one out of the box. Again, since we just did that, that should not be required, but just in case. Okay, so we have that and then we need to pick an image that PHP Storm will be using when it stores the Docker container. So in that case, we are not going to use <laughs> FPM, but we're going to use the um, PHP-CLI latest. This is the one that I've just shown uh, before. This is the image that we're going to use. All right, hit OK. Um, now PHP Storm is checking the PHP uh, installation. Um, if everything goes all right, this is the way uh, that your screen should look right now. So PHP Storm was able to talk to Docker, um, could verify that PHP uh, is installed in a certain version, and it also found that Xdebug is installed. So cool. Um, when we have that, we can hit uh, apply or okay here. Um, and uh, we should automatically have this, uh, this new interpreter selected. And as you can see, PHP Storm will automatically configure the path mappings for you. Um, in that case, to slash opt slash project, some default value from PHP Storm, I guess. And it will also configure the, um, the path mapping or the voluming of the, uh, for, for the Docker container. So when PHP Storm starts the container, it will um, make sure that the Docker container has all the contents of our um, project folder and can access it. Okay, and that's pretty much it. If I now hit okay, um, head over to my hello world.php and let it run, uh, then PHP Storm will start. Uh, should do it. Ah, here we go. We'll start a, a Docker container in uh, in the background, basically. We'll run my my script, my app hello world uh, script, which generates the desired output. And basically, I'm done. That is all all I needed to do in order to make this work. Um, nice thing here is that. Uh, for me, um, debugging always worked out of the box. So when I set a breakpoint and now say debug hello world.php, um, then the, uh, the execution should stop at this point. And it does. Great. Okay, so super cool. Um, when we look at the console to see what's, what's actually happening behind the scenes, and then we can see that, um, I don't know what, what that protocol does, something uh, PHP Storm specific, um, but PHP Storm um, executes a PHP script on the Docker container, and it also passes um, like a number of, of options for Xdebug, and especially this one down here is important because it denotes the IP address that the container can use to connect back to the host in order to make the debugging process working. Keep that in mind because this is something that will not work out of the box when we look at the deployment configuration setup. Okay, but for now we're good. Um, running scripts works, um, it's running on the Docker container, we can debug stuff, so great. Um, super smooth process, uh, process um, yeah, cool. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this, uh, this setup is that PHP Storm will start the container, run the script and shut down the container. And um, uh, like usually I'm, I'm used to something that is basically running all the time in the background or, or as a server somewhere. Um, and also I'm, I, I like to be able to just have a look at the server, just in case there's something you need to debug. Um, and I found it easier in, in practice um, when you have like something running that you can connect to and just like explore what's going on. So 
that being said, um, what we need to do now uh, in order to make this work is use the so-called deployment configuration. Um, to do that, open settings and look for deployment. Under uh, build execution deployment, you will find um, the, the point deployment and we now will create a new one um, that we will call docker SSH um, of type SFTP. And now we need to provide like some options to um, or some, some information so that PHPStorm is able to connect to this newly created um, SFTP host. So in order to do that, we are using localhost, so 127.27.001 um, with port 2020 Um Remember, this is the one that we use to like map everything to the container port 2020. Um, we are using root as a user. Um, authentication type is um, a key pair. We're now going to choose the private key, a key file um, that corresponds to the public one that we have used in the Docker container uh, when we created it. So for me, this is over here um, under PHP CLI SSH and then insecure ID RSA. This is the private key file that corresponds to this public one. Okay, so once we have that, we need to, or next thing we need to do is basically configure the path mappings so that PHP Storm knows what on our local machine corresponds to what on the, on the Docker container or Docker server. And in our case, we only want to use or want to map the app folder, like this is where our code lives, to var, oops, voila, to var dub dub dub. Again, remember, this is basically what we configured in the Docker Compose file. So basically exactly the same thing. Um, okay, so we're now gonna test the connection. Since I did not start the container, this will probably fail. Oh, <laughs> it does not, that is interesting. Uh, so let's head over here. And let me see if something is running. Docker Compose, do it. Um, yeah, okay, so then I probably forgot to, to shut this down before I started the video, sorry for that. So let me just do that right now. So I'm shutting down the container. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying the same thing again. Now it please fail. Okay, now it failed. Um, so we cannot connect, which makes sense because nothing is running right now. So what we need to do is now actually start the container and we're doing this with uh, docker compose up dash D and then the container that we want to start, start. in that case, it's docker um, PHP CLI, start that. And the Okay, cool. So the container should now be up and running. And now if we connect or try to connect, this should work um, as expected. Come on, it worked. It worked a second before. Um, okay, so my, so my guess is that it just takes some time until um, PHP, PHP Storm picks up the changes here. Um, although this is kind of unfortunate for this video. Okay, um, this is also normal. So because we've shut down and restarted the container, the uh, ID RSI fingerprint, fingerprint is no, is, isn't matching any longer. But in that case, that is like, okay. Um, actually good that you, that you got, that we got this message because it's something that you might run into as well. So in case that happens, not a problem, just hit yes, this is okay. Okay, but now it should be, now everything's, is, as, it, as it's supposed to be. Okay, uh, just quickly recap. Um, we basically provided all the information that PHP Storm needs in order to connect to our Docker container. Um, and we also provided information about the path mappings. So PHP Storm knows what is where um, compared or when you compare local setup and remote setup. Okay, so when we have that, then 
the next step will or would be to actually use this this deployment configuration as um, interpreter. So same story here, um, because we basically just just did that for the um, built-in Docker support. Um, let me remove the highlighting. So let me get okay. Um, so this is the setup from before, and we are now going to use. Um, our deployment configuration. So choose deployment configuration down here, choose Docker SSH here. This is what we just created. Um, and now one piece of information because this should not work ah, because it tells us that user bin PHP doesn't exist on a remote server. That is correct um, because it's actually under user local bin PHP. And for some reason, PHP storm doesn't pick that up automatically. So if we now hit OK, everything should be fine. And it is. So like this looks good. Also going to name this connection Docker SSH, um, PHP version, Xdebug. Um, so all of that looks, looks great. So we're going to hit OK. Going to make sure that we are actually using our new interpreter. Hit OK. And now try the same thing. So run our hello world example. Let's see if it still works and looks like it does. <clears throat> but in that case, like note, note the difference here. We are now not using this Docker colon slash slash protocol, but actually SFTP. Um, the username that we provided, um, the like the local host and the path uh, and the port and the PHP executable, and then the script that we are going to run. And in that case, it like PHP storm automatically resolved that var dub 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 hello world on the remote machine actually belongs to uh, like code base slash Docker PHP tutorial slash app slash hello world dot PHP. So cool, that also worked, um, perfect. So next thing would be to actually debug now it's gonna getting or now it's gonna get interesting. So we're gonna set a breakpoint, right click, um, debug hello world, and boom, doesn't work. So we get the message connection with xdebug 2.6.0 was not established, blah blah. Which is weird because it worked before. Um, we've also seen that PHP, PHP Storm was able to um, um, to see that in the setup. Like when we've just seen the deployment configuration, we were able to see that Xdebug was installed, and still for some reason it's not even. And it, we are not able to 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 um, to set the breakpoint and pause the execution. And this actually took me a while to figure out. And there will be like a third part of the tutorial when I'm going to talk in detail how to basically debug um, <laughs> or or figure out when Xdebug is not not working. Um, for now, I'm just going to show the solution. Um, so the problem is basically that PHP Storm has a number of options that it um, passes on to Xdebug when it executes the script. And one of those options is the remote host. And this, um, again, is the IP address that the container should use in order to connect back to the host, because that's the way Xdebug works. Um, and for some reason, this IP address that PHP Storm uses here um, is incorrect. I think that this is due to a bug uh, in the Docker for Win setup, um, because I've read about that somewhere. Um, and again, like, uh, not sure where exactly this is coming from, but PHP Storm just uses the wrong, incorrect um, IP address in that case. So, how do we make this work? Um, fortunately, we can configure PHP Storm to pass like certain um, options to Xdebug when we start a debugging session. Um, to do that, we need to need again <laughs> uh, head over to the interpreter setup, um, and down here we can actually configure Xdebug. And um, what we need to do right now is override the xdebug.remote host setting. So that's the setting that we've seen here. And we need to override this with the correct IP address. And interestingly, the 
correct IP address um, is um, like we like Docker is providing us with like some sort of magic DNS entry that is called um, uh, host dot Docker dot internal and this um, DNS entry is available to every container so we can just pass that as an option to Xdebug so let's do that um, so head back to the interpreter settings and uh, docker ssh is correct and now we're going to configure um, or going to add uh, an option for xdebug the remote host and we're going to give it the host.docker.internal value apply okay okay and now we're going to retry to debug so let's debug again and boom uh, it worked very cool uh, and we can actually see that when we take a look at the um, console because in here we can see like the actual arguments passed to xdebug and we still have like the incorrect one but we have also the correct one this host docker internal thingy and that will actually override um, any previous um, arguments if that doesn't work or if that wouldn't work for some reason um, there's actually a way to just disable everything um, but as this is not important for now, we're going to skip that part. Um, but again, like using this magical host Docker internal um, DNS entry, we can basically make um, Xdebug work um, when we use the deployment configuration setup in PHP Storm. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Can now like end the script. Um, and I think this is all for now. Thank you for listening.